What is up, people of the internet? My name is Alex, and you're watching QCFV, Queer Christian Family Values, YouTube. Uh, there's a lot that's been happening, and I just kind of wanted to give you a rundown, starting with some changes for QCFV, and then I'm also going to be talking about my surgery and giving you an explanation as to what's been going on with it, and just kind of from the beginning. So, real quick, QCFV has been uh, taken over by, well, not taken uh, we've been merged with uh, Landmark uh, Worship Center, which has been our home church, has been our partner for a while, uh, but now we are going to be the media production company for them, um, so everything um, that you see from Landmark will be produced by QCFE, such as videos, live feeds, um, photos, podcasts, whole nine yards. We've got two member, new members that are going to be on the team. You may, you've seen that we do have... Um, partners such as writers, uh, designers, and stuff like that, um, but we have now two full-time um, media team members, uh, and so they are going to be leadership, and they're going to have uh, basically the same uh, level as me. Um, I will still be the owner and operator, but they will have more power in regards to what they can do on QCFV. Um, they will be editing, they'll be really, really involved, and I will introduce those members to you later. Um, and, you know, we'll try to do more of a, a video just to introduce who they are. We'll interview them and, and different things like that. And I'll more than likely put it here on the YouTube channel uh, just so everybody can get a visual of them and I'll post their profiles and all that other stuff at a later time. And, uh, so, in regards to my surgery, uh, so we started talking to my uh, surgeon last year, um, months, I want to say March of last year possibly, maybe later than that, po um, yeah, I think around March is when we started, and um, we got a date for my surgery for this year, well, Ultimately, we ended up getting a date for this year for March 17th. Um, she, at, in December, I was emailed by the uh, surgeon's office and we just confirmed it. The process to get it has been documented on my blog, on QCFE's blog, but we, uh, in order to get it, I had to go see a therapist, I had to get a therapist letter, and I had to have my endocrinologist send all the documentation on how long I've been on testosterone and how long I've been my gender and all that fun stuff. Um, I had seen my doctor and I gave them all that information and then they sent that off to um, my insurance company to see if they would, you know, just approve it or not. <laughs> and so they did approve it. Uh, I did have a copay, which I knew about, which was going to be about $2,600. In total, the they covered about $7,000 of the surgery. No, five to seven. Because um, the surgeries can be up to $10,000 uh, out of pocket if, like, just if you didn't have insurance, period. And so with Chris's surgery, um, we paid about $1,000 up front, um, and that includes to the surgeon uh, and hospital, just everything. We didn't pay it all at once. It kind of was over time leading up to the pre-op appointment. And with him, we didn't know how much was going to be due from the hospital. And so we had gone to the pre-op appointment and they told him that he was going to have to pay $2,000 that day. And we're like, nobody talked to us. And so they said, okay, well, we'll go ahead and set the surgery. We'll have a financial expert call you, get you set up. Well, that didn't happen. So we ended up having to call and get a hold of them and they were like no that's fine you just go ahead and have the surgery and we'll set up a payment arrangement plan with you well with me i did the same process called the financial people and they were like no we don't do that anymore so you're gonna have to pay twenty six hundred dollars or we're gonna cancel the surgery and i'm like well i love how nobody told me this and this is last you know week I wish somebody would have said something because otherwise I would have pushed the surgery out f sooner or tried to find some other means to do it. And so they said, no, if we don't get the money by Monday, then it's done. It's canceled. And I'm like, and, and there was like no empathy in their voice. There, were, there was just nothing. And I just, I was super disappointed, super upset. Um, but luckily I've, you know, went to church 
the day before finding out that news and I, I was in a better headspace. I was more calm and it was like, okay, so I will get the surgery eventually, but this year it would be hard because if I were to have the surgery this year, then I would have been out of work for three weeks or more, probably more like six weeks healing um, without pay because I've already experienced so many illnesses this year because they're still trying to figure out why I get dizzy and stuff. I don't, you may have to go watch another video, but I'll give you a rundown. Um, I've been dizzy and, and nearly fainting and falling. Um, they think I may have vestibular migraines, but they don't really know what it is. So I've got to see a neurologist. I've been seeing specialists, been missing a lot of work here and there. And I had paid time off and I've pretty much eaten through it. So if I were to have surgery this year and be out for that long of a period of time, then I would be without pay for a long period of time. However, if I wait till next year, then I'll have my paid time off, my short-term leave paid, uh, vacations, all that other stuff. I'll have that renewed again, and so I would still I would be able to use it at that time. Now I have also an HSA card, which stands for the he uh, health savings account. And what that is is uh, each month that I or each pay period that I get paid, I set back a certain amount to go into a like a debit card account, um, and it's pre-tax dollars that I can use towards medical stuff. And since my work covers top surgery, I would then be able to use that money for my top surgery. Um, and so I'm going to plan to put back enough money to cover my top surgery uh, for next year. And the cool thing about an HSA card is you don't have to wait to accumulate that funds. It's available immediately at the start of the year. Uh, you just have to send them documentation as to why they why you're using it um, and we've used the HSA card for our testosterone we use it for all of our medical expenses already so we know it's gonna work we paid with Chris's uh, surgery and stuff we've paid with them never had an issue so that's the plan for next year so I'm not as disappointed as I thought a little frustrated um, just because I wanted it to get over with, I am just so tired of having to wear a binder and my dysphoria. Just, it's not a fun experience. And so I wanted to give you a little bit of a background as to what's going on and just share this information with you in case anybody else is going through it. And if you would like to donate to my surgery, let me know. Um, but also keep in mind, Everything we do for QCFE does go back to you guys, so we actually do are going to be doing a binder giveaway um, here shortly. I will uh, tell you some information. It's going to be given away in May, but we're going to have a sign-up sheet, and it's, it's going to be um, due by uh, the end of April for us to announce. But I haven't uh, sent out that form yet, but we are going to be doing a binder giveaway in the United States Um here in the next uh, few months. So keep an eye on that. If you would like to support us and also donate to our um, our binder giveaway, <laughs> then uh, go to patreon.com slash QCFV. I'll put all the links in the bio down below, and we appreciate all your support, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.